History is really amazing though. And uh, what historians know about history is very little. And often their historical methodology is one that almost keeps them from seeing the picture. Arnold Toynbee, for example, who is a great historian, was very unpopular among historians until, and maybe he still is to some extent, but that's because Toynbee wanted to make history work. I want to be able to tell you about history and what happens in history, not just to give you the details you know, about this particular crisis or that crisis. Again, he wanted to get beyond specialization, that if we've got all these books, all these journals, and I can't tell you something about civilization and the fall and rise of it, then what's the purpose? And Toynbee used to say that, you know, historians need to beware of sociologists because sociologists are trying to make sense of society. And historians never do. Some do. But, you know, Toynbee, when he did that, I mean, this was a big violation of the terms of the deal in the eyes of a lot of historians, you know, and uh, he said one of his, well, I won't say what he said, but, uh, you know, one of his teachers, he asked him what is history, he said one damn thing after another, it's one damn thing after another, but he said, you know, what can I do with that? It's like, I want to make sense of it, I want to make sense of it, but when we talk about history, really you especially, you know, Islamic history is absolutely profound. And most Muslims and most non-Muslims have no idea what we did. And to bring this to life and to bring this to light is extremely important. And even these things like the history of the prophets, the history of religions in the past, it's a rich, rich field. And, you know, we need to be involved in that. And we need to do it very carefully, and we are believers. You know, and that doesn't mean we're going to make uh, crazy museums where we see men riding dinosaurs and things like that, like the Christian right does in the United States. But like, let's study this really honestly and carefully, and look at what is there. And um, there are a lot of amazing things. Thamud, for example. Who were these people, Thamud? They existed. They have their writing all over the Arabian Peninsula. Their script is almost certain, I believe their script is the script from which Phoenician and Hebrew and Greek and Latin comes. It's much older than 1200 BC, which is Phoenician. I would say it goes back way before that. You know, so these are things to be studied carefully. The Arabian Peninsula is the richest repository of Neolithic human beings that we know in the world. And who studies that? You know, these are really important things. Again, you know, may, may we study these things well. There are a lot of leads. You know, the, the people who settled Damascus, the Arameans, they studied Damascus, Hems and Hama. What did they call themselves Arameans? What's that from? They spell it Alif Ra'mim. That's Iram. They say Aram. Or they say Aram, but it is Iram. And where did they come from? They came from the deserted quarter. They came from the very land of Ad. Big deal. Okay, but that's, where they, that's who they were. And when Babylon wanted to enculturate them, it could not do it. And Toynbee's wise about that. He says that's because the Arameans had a cultural past that made them very proud of who they were and gave them an identity that they felt was superior to Babylon. See, that's just a hint in history. But like that to me is ding, you know, it's like, like this is significant. Who also came from the deserted quarter? The Fayumis, the people of Fayum. They come out of the deserted quarter. There were four people in Neolithic Arabia that we know of. There were Fayumis some of the ancient Egyptians. Maybe there are other cultures, but the Fayum culture is from the deserted quarter. We have very good evidence of that. And then you have also 
um, the Sumerians. The Sumerians who are the ones who make the first civilization of Mesopotamia. They come from the, from the Arabian Peninsula. And they believed that it was the land of Noah. They believed in the flood. They would have second burials of their dead, you know, in Bahrain and in Dilmun, as they called it. They, Mecca didn't exist in those days. That's 1,000, 2,000 years before Abraham's time. But they knew that it was sacred land. And they believed that Noah was buried there. They didn't call him Noah, they called him Utupishti. You know, so these are things that, you know, if you and I look at, <clears throat> you know, we may have a different understanding of it. Very, very interesting. And, you know, may we be careful about how we do this, may we be honest about how we do this, but, um, you know, we, we have to use the tools that we have. And we talked about rooting science yesterday. That's profound, but also like rooting history, studying history. You know, I come from the United States, we're Americans, and the history of Islam in America, you would not believe. We have a history, for example, you know, New York City. Who founded Coney Island? Do you know? Do you know? The son of Murad Rais, whose name was Anthony Janssen von Sali. He was a renegade, he was a Muslim, who had a copy of the Qur'an. This Coney Island, which is Brooklyn, you know, Coney Island was established by a Dutch Muslim. You know, really. And everybody knew it. In fact, I mean, everybody knew it. And, um, you know, who's the descendants of uh, Anthony van Sali? Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart has a Muslim great-grandfather. And also the Vanderbilts, the whole Vanderbilt families, the McKinley families. These are all descendants of Muslims. You know, and we have Muslims that were in America, I believe, before Columbus ever came. In 1312, Mansa, Kankan, Abu Bakr, the king of Mali, the wealthiest empire in the world, sent 2,400 boats with warriors across the Atlantic and he got to the other side. We have sound archaeological evidence for that. And when the Spanish come to America and Cortez goes into Mexico City, he said, I found many mosques and many pagan temples and many houses. It's not disputed. That statement is not disputed by any historian. They just say there were no Muslims in America before Columbus. And he doesn't know what he's saying. He is deluded. No, he's not deluded. Columbus, and Cortez, Pizarro says the same thing. So it's like, as long as we're not writing the history, no one knows how to understand that. But once we, and again, Westerners usually, what they don't understand about us is so profound. It's so profound. They don't understand anything. So we understand that. We've got to bring that into the picture. Uh, there's so many interesting things, and may Allah enable us really with enthusiasm, you know, to learn this knowledge and to study sciences and history and everything, and um, that will be, I believe, a great contribution.